Hey folks, Engineer775 here wanting to start uh, part one of a how to install and build a hydraulic ram pump. I'm getting a lot of good comments and a lot of questions on how to do this. Before we actually get to the pump, um, can you actually install a ram pump where you are, where you want to possibly install one? Do you have the situation that'll work? Uh, rams won't work everywhere. Okay, and so we need to talk about a few things. I'm going to work this problem from both ends. How much water do you need, and what is your source? As I said in the overview. Okay, sources of water are ponds, streams, springs, um, artesian wells, artesian wells. That's probably pretty good for now. We'll use those as our as our supply. Again, a well won't work to drive a ram. Okay, so if you need a pump for a, a well, that's a different project, and I will be talking about how to build pumps um, for your your well too. Okay, so we have a source of water, and we need to bring the water up to um, a storage tank for use in our home maybe, or a garden, maybe livestock, or all three. And so one of the things is good to determine how much water am I using or will I need um, in the situation I'm thinking about for my home, for my gardens, and for my livestock. Again, figure worst case scenario, and then when you're thinking about this whole thing, how much water, what kind of water, one of the big things, I'm just going to keep saying it, is volume. In gallons per minute does my source su supply. And I'm going to be taking that source down to the ram, and then from the ram I need to get it up to my storage. So that's basically um, a ram pump installation. You work from both, both ends. Now you can say, okay, I have a source, and I'm just going to build a ram to see what I can get. You can approach this that way, but you can also approach it from, okay, I need 500 gallons for my cows. I need 50 for my chickens. I need a thousand for our home. I need another 50 for the pigs. Uh, whatever. So, say 1600 gallons is what I need. Okay, can I do that? Am I going to be able to do that with a hydraulic ram pump? Well, how do I determine that? I need to know my flow rate, my gallons per minute coming out of this, this pump. And the formula is volume equals fall. Sorry, I'm already messing up here. The, the formula is volume times the fall divided by the elevation times the efficiency and for most standard rams I'm going to just use 60 percent and that'll give me my D and that's the gallons delivered per minute if I want to know this would give it in per minute now if I wanted to know my gallons per day based on what I need I multiply by 1440 and that'll give me my gallons per minute so I can work this all backwards Okay, I know what my elevation, let's say, elevation is up here to where I need to pump. My fall is from the top of the source of the water down to my, that's fall, that's F, okay, and that's F there. So, volume in gallons per minute times the fall divided by the elevation. So you can see as your elevation increases, this number is going to go down. As this number is shorter, then the overall gallons per minute that will be pumped is greater. So first thing you do, folks, is determine the gallons per minute that you're getting. You can do that by running a pipe out of your source and just do it into a five gallon bucket and kind of, you know, measure stopwatch. It doesn't have to be super accurate. How many gallons per minute am I getting out of that? Also, if you have a river and it's very hard to channel all that water into a pipe, um, and I won't do it here, but look up weir tables, W-E-I-R, and you can build a weir across a creek, basically a, a board with a notch in it, across your creek. Your water's running through this weir at a certain depth, 
and you measure back a certain distance and there are tables what that will determine for you the amount of water in gallons per minute that you're getting out of that creek or that stream. Okay, let's talk drive pipe. Drive pipe is very critical to uh, doing a ramp pump right. You can do a drive pipe too short, you can do a drive pipe too long, you can do a drive pipe the wrong diameter, you can do a drive pipe too steep, too shallow. Um, a drive pipe should be at an angle and it doesn't, it's, it's a function really of, you know, you don't want your pump like this and it, it depends on the, uh, a slight incline I have found to be the best for a drive pipe because the, the function of the ram is going to be determined by the velocity of this flow and the fall and how much fall you have. So when you can increase the fall, the more you can increase the fall, the better. And sometimes you've got to move your ram downstream to get lower and lower to increase the fall. The only problem with that is sometimes your drive pipe gets incredibly long. Let me tell you some rule of, rules of thumb. If you go up to 15 foot of fall, your drive pipe needs to be six times whatever that fall is. So if, you're, if your pump is 10 foot below your source, then your would be, if this was 10, then you would have 60 foot of drive pipe. Yes, 60 foot. Drive pipes are typically long, okay? Um, if you go up to 25 feet, you is uh, four times the fall for up to 50 foot of fall. And yes, you can get off a waterfall or something and have 50 foot of drop. Your drive pipe it only needs to be three times the fall, okay? So drive pipes are critical. Now there's another critical thing that happens um, if you have to move your ram installation downstream to get a decent fall, okay? What you, what you need to do is you need to, it's kind of bringing the source with you. And so if you need to move this pipe, say you need to move this ram downstream quite a ways to get 15 foot of fall. And in order to do that, you've, you've just gone down, say you've gone down a couple, 200 feet. Well, you can't, you don't make a 200 foot long drive pipe. That's going to give you problems. The pump's not going to run right. And so what you do is you actually bring a stand pipe downstream. And you install a stand pipe with your ram. This would be teed in here, okay? The stand pipe water level in that stand pipe is going to be the same water level as your source. So that's going to be the, the same, same level. So you're mimicking, you're just bringing your source downstream with you. Then your, this becomes your supply line. Then this is your drive pipe. And this is your stand pipe. Okay. Now the stand pipe, there's a rule of thumb on this. So say, um, say you're one inch, or building a one inch ram. This is a one inch diameter. This supply needs to be a two inch diameter, and the and the standpipe needs to be a three. One, two, three, or two, three, four for your standpipe. Those are the diameters. That has empirically been found out to be the best arrangement. Um, I've done this. I've had to bring I've had to bring a ram pump way down the downstream because I want to use it to pump spring water. I'll get to double acting. Double acting is more complicated. Okay, so the drive pipe is critical. So it's great if you can keep your ram pump close to your source, then you don't have to deal with a stand pipe or a supply pipe. One other thing, no matter what you do, this area, you've got to, you, you have to put a strainer. You can't just stick the pipe in there because you're going to get leaves and sticks. And I installed one, my uh, strainer came apart in my pond, and I actually got a fish caught in my inner valve on my rife ram and it was I couldn't figure out why my ram wasn't running it's because I had a fish that had been extruded up into it and boy did that stink when I opened it up but anyway that's beside the point you need to have a good strainer on there you can make homemade ones um, and with wire and there's a lot of different ways you can make a strainer and I won't get into that right now All right, we've talked the drive pipe. Now we need to talk. We get to the ram. At the ram, I've drawn this little rectangle here, and that's just representing an anchoring point, a concrete slab, pad, a rock, um, some way to anchor that ram. Because the ram, it, they hammer, they hammer. Sixty, it depends. You can forty to one hundred and forty beats a minute, and some of them can really hammer. 
And so you want to anchor that ram, hold that energy so you don't, you're not moving your drive pipe, you're not moving your delivery pipe around. You want to anchor it. Okay, and there's a lot of ways to do that. Some rams have anchoring feet. They have feet where you can put threaded rods in your pad, bolt it down. That's a great thing. You want to secure your ram. The delivery pipe needs to be half the diameter, as a rule of thumb, half the diameter of your drive pipe. Again, one inch ram um, drive, which would make it a one inch ram. You want a half inch delivery pipe. If you go three quarter, I would go half inch. Uh, if you're going two, go one. Uh, my two inch rife ram, I do a one inch delivery. Works good. Don't take any 90 degree, don't put any elbows in it. You want sweeping curves. You want to keep the friction losses down in your, in your delivery. And uh, pipe, you can use Schedule 40 PVC, black pipe, black pipe, the rolled plastic pipe. That's always a pain to work with sometimes over real long distances. But um, And then the PEX, the same. I've gone with a Schedule 40 PVC for most of mine. Uh, but you can do whatever is cheapest, whatever is available. But again, once you're past the RAM, you can use uh, plastic for, for your delivery pipes. Okay, that's your source, your destination. Your drive pipe, a lot of critical, do that, pay attention to the details on that. Anchor your ram and your delivery pipe, it needs to be half the diameter of your, of your drive. Again, if you need to move this downstream to increase your fall, you say, okay, I've got this set up, but I'm not going to meet my 1,600 gallons a minute for my cows and chickens and pigs in our, in our home, then I've got to make some adjustments. Either i got to increase the fall, which is typically the... the if the fall is really the only variable, you can't change your your source rate typically. There's no way you can do that. And you need to get your water to a certain elevation. And remember, don't forget this elevation. If you want a gravity feed down to these sources, you want, say you want pressure there. And that's why I've set mine up where I have some halfway decent pressure at my garden. And so I don't have to use any electricity to water my cows and my garden and in my house. So you want to get this as high as you can, even if you have to build a water tower. And so to figure out your elevation there, remember your elevation is, is from here up there. Um, and, and then you might say, okay, I need to get that high to my home, but now I want to have 10 PSI of water pressure minimum at my garden. So how much higher do I have to go to get plus 10 PSI at my garden. Okay, this might have brought, this E might have brought it up to my home, but I want 10 PSI. How much higher do I have to, to go? You just take your 10 times 2.31 PSI per foot. And so that means I gotta put that tank up at 23 feet higher than this elevation. I gotta go up. And so that lets me know, um, so I, because the goal is to, it'd be nice to have water pressure at all of these places. And so you got to take that into account. But when you do that, what are you doing? You're increasing E, which decreases the number. But the beauty of a ram, it's like the tortoise and the hare. It is 24-7, and, and you can pump a, lot of, a pump a lot of water per day. And, and then size your tank, saying, okay, I'm not quite getting enough, but... You have water on, on storage, make a bigger tank, maybe a 2,000 gallon water tank or 3,000 gallon, 5,000 gallon. Just let this thing keep pumping away. All right.